So I want to be clear on this very important word. Make sure that my understanding of it is the same as your understanding. In uh, science, the word universe means everything there is, all space and time, every, everything in physical existence. And Bryce has mentioned, and we should do this, any time we have a very important word in cosmology, we should, we should uh, pull that word out, write it down, and make sure your understanding of it is the same as mine, like galaxy or um, gravity, any of these important words, we should make sure we have the same understanding. So, for now, I'm hoping that you understand universe the same way I do. I'm trusting that karma is a good translator. I, I've heard he is a good translator. Is, is it true? I, I can't tell. He could be saying anything. Sometimes. Okay. <laughs> That wasn't what I said. Really? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. Yes, he's I, I, I see I have to trust him. <laughs> okay, you have enough good English, so fine. We can check. Yeah. So, to start this business, we talk about in science and in the theory of science, we talk about world model. We think world maybe means a small thing like a planet, but this phrase, world model, refers to how we think about, you know, large regions of space. So the first thing we're going to do, take five minutes, seven minutes, is I'm going to ask each of you to draw the universe. Oh, yeah. It's your understanding, your training, your experience. Not, not what you think I want, it's just what, what you know and what you understand. There are no, no name, we put no names on it, so it doesn't matter, we not be tested, and it's not an art competition, I don't care if you're not artist. <laughs> Okay, so thank you. Um, we will not look at these right now, but uh, I just want to remind you of an interesting thing about humans, us, human beings. Uh, we are creatures that can keep the entire universe in our heads. That's, that's pretty interesting, because it's a big 
the universe is big. And maybe dogs, I don't know, dogs think, and maybe they just keep their next meal in their head, but that's all. So this is so I'm going to show you some pictures of the way the universe is conceived by people through history, different cultures, and I'm not going to comment, I'm not going to judge these, I'm not going to say this is wrong, this is silly, this is, this is not, doesn't make sense. These are just different ideas people have had through time. This is typical of a view you might see even before the time of Buddhism, Christianity, this is maybe 2,000 years or more ago. You have a flat earth, uh, you have heaven above and the underworld or hell below. Now, many of the earliest ideas had the earth, the earth was not sitting in space, that was not thought to be possible, so the earth would be floating in water. Here is another example, this from 4,000 years ago. Um, again, the sky is above, the earth is still flat, and in this case there's a goddess called Nut uh, that holds the sky up. By the time of the beginning of Christianity, we have a, it's a similar idea, um, the flat earth, and but there is also now a it's not just geography now, now there is a moral judgment because the higher place, heaven, is the good place and the lower place, hell, is the bad place. So this is interesting because this means that the cosmology has now been connected with the morality and the ethics. And the, and the religion, of course. Um, here now from the Roman time, so maybe 1,500 years ago, again, a very similar idea. And also notice that the universe is quite small. The universe is really not much bigger than the earth. But logically, the people who are thinking at this time, especially the Greek, the Greek philosophers, they realize there's an issue here. If you make a boundary to the universe, it's a boundary to what? What, what is outside? Is, is nothing, and then what does that mean? So the issue of the boundary is important in philosophy. <laughs> Uh, 
Tadi Tansam Sia di Kaleji Shagu Yimida, Tansam Di Shagu Yimida, Di Gablola Kariore, Kaya Mewa Re, Kaya Mewa Re, Seven Yimida, Di Kodun Karisia, Tadi Tansam Sia di Nyora Shadi Yoreskundu. And the great philosopher Plato had a student called Archytas. And Archytas wrote a dialogue that we can read from 2,000 years ago. And Archytas imagined that he's a warrior and he goes to the edge of the universe with a spear. And he throws the spear and he wonders what happens to the spear. Does the spear go forever? And if it goes forever, what does that mean? But if the spear hits something, an edge, a boundary, does it bounce? Does it break it? What is, what is the edge made of? <laughs> Greek and Tadub Nalola, Anita, Tadumke, Keracha, Plato, Sejura, Chesan Kuranki, and Lubru Girujures, Chesan Ankuran, Giruki, any Karsamutangres, and O Kesi, any Jigdin comes here and Tayo Wimbina, and the Tansam de la Chinche and the Ningi upon Dongi Wimbina, and the Karsagres, Dong de Tansam de Gage Durves, Kesi Chim Bimbina, and the Tansam Sea the Karen, Rosia the Karen, Rosa the Kare. Kesi, Majin Bachij and Tansam de la Dungi and So Ranger, Law Yumbina, and the Karchagres, Logreve, Dungerve, Dunga Chagreve, Sierra, the Niki, Tiwa, the Sam Mangustan, your rest. So you can see that you only have two possibilities. The universe is finite or is infinite. And both possibilities have a logical problem. If the Earth is sitting in infinite space, what does that mean? And if there is an edge, what, what is it an edge to? What is beyond the edge? So I will show some more examples from different cultures. This is from uh, Central America, maybe 1,000, 1,500 years ago, the Mayans. And again, it's a very similar idea. The earth is flat, there's the heavens here. Uh, in the Mayan culture, the most important object in the sky is Venus. So they make their calendar with Venus, and the G Venus is a god that they worship. <laughs> Uh and this from another, the Inca culture, also from Central America, very similar ideas. These cultures shared their ideas. This is from a culture that lives where I am from, and I live in Arizona, southwestern United States, and the original Native Americans there include the Navajo, and so this also from maybe 1,000, 1,500 years ago, a similar cosmology. They did not communicate, we don't think they communicated with the Inca and the Mayans in Central and Southern America, so that independently they have this idea. Kizadi <laughs> Um, this now from about 1,000 years ago, now we're in Burma or Myanmar and Asia. And now we actually do have a spherical Earth. So in this, in this model, the universe is a sphere and the Earth is a sphere, not flat. 
This also may be from seven or eight hundred years ago. This is from India, southern India. And I don't make any comment because you, you, know, you know this much better than I do. But it's interesting that in the, in the forming of the cosmology, the Tibetan cosmology, uh, there's a two-dimensional geography, but it is, it's a three-dimensional world, three-dimensional world model. And we're familiar with this because we do this all the time when we think about the Earth. We know that the Earth is a sphere, but we always project it into two dimensions so we can make a picture or representation. And in your cosmology, uh, in the one I just shown you, a very similar thing is happening. You're taking a three-dimensional world model and doing a stereo projection down to the two dimensions, and then you can represent it with art. So the Tibetan cosmology is superior cosmology because it is three-dimensional space. Um, returning to the Western tradition, um, the Greeks also, the ancient Greeks, so maybe 2,000, 2,300 years ago, they were also aware of arguments that the Earth was a sphere. And so we see pictures from a long time ago that shows the Earth not flat, but spherical. Um, and by the time of the Plato and the great Greek philosophers, we now have an arrangement. So it's not just the Earth, but we actually have the particular order of the planets. In this, each one is attached to a sphere. In this cosmology, the material of the sphere is supposed to be some kind of crystal, some transparent uh, material uh, that carries the planet. The Earth is spherical, but in this cosmology it is stationary, it's not moving. The planets are moving, and then all the stars that you see in the sky are attached to an outer sphere made of the same crystal, and this sphere rotates every 24 hours. So we move forward now to the, mm, this doesn't show very well, but uh, we move forward to the time of Dante in the 14th century and 
Um, it's, it's a mixture now of the two cosmology. What happened was, in the history of ideas, some of the Greek ideas were lost. And the Greek knowledge that the Earth was a sphere was lost for 1,000 years. And then in 1543, of course, we have a revolution from Copernicus. Now, the word revolution in English means violent, political, and social upheaval. And the use of that word that way begins at the time of Copernicus. And the book that Copernicus wrote in this year that describes this cosmology, the sun-centered cosmology, is called On the Revolutions. And so this book was revolutionary at the time. So what is revolutionary here? Well, the sun is at the center, here's the earth and the moon and the other planets. Now the earth is in motion. And because the Greeks gave the knowledge of how big the earth is, if the earth is spinning and moving around the sun, it is moving very fast, hundreds of miles an hour through space. You can see why the Greeks and most early cultures wanted the earth to be stationary because they had measured the size of the earth. The earth is roughly 25,000 miles around the circumference. If it spins once every day, then at the equator, you're moving 1,000 miles an hour. Up here at a northern latitude, you're moving maybe 700 miles an hour. It doesn't feel like we're moving that fast. What is the circumference of the Earth? 25,000. So, we should be moving right now at 700 miles an hour, and somebody would say, well, we don't feel it, it can't be true. And that's one motion. The other motion, the Earth is maybe millions of miles from the Sun, and it must do this every year. And each hour, miles per hour, that's tens of thousands of miles per hour, much faster. And we don't feel that either. <laughs> So, 
ani zambuling ni mal kora ji kor guye we mena dile ke ani jo do guye ro chesa dinde na sin jo do wa de ang jo kor guye mares so if this argument was difficult why did it why did it persist it persisted because the greeks had made geometric had used geometry to make arguments that the sun was much larger than the earth and to them it was more logical for the small thing to go around the big thing than the other way around sun is smaller the sun is larger they yeah they made geometry arguments that the sun is much larger than the earth and so the small thing should go around the big thing they used an argument that if I have a small object, I can easily make the small object go around me, and I don't move. But if it's a bigger object going around me, then I have to move. I, I must move. And if you were bigger than me, then it's impossible. I can't, I can't make you spin around me. So there were arguments for the sun to be at the center. Also, at the same time, other people started to think, well, we have no evidence for the crystalline sphere, these spheres that are supposed to carry the planets, and one sphere to carry all the stars. So maybe they don't exist. Maybe these objects are just in space. And so here, only 30 years after Copernicus, we have an astronomer in England who's used the Copernicus model, and then he says, no, the stars are not in the, on one sphere. Uh, they are distributed through space, and in his book, he said this could be infinite. It could go forever. Stars can be as far as you like. So, um, I want to take a little time for you to go in groups and maybe discuss and then, and, and you can also write in your journals. There, there are two, we mentioned one very profound issue in cosmology, whether the universe is finite or infinite, whether it has an edge or no edge. So that's a question about space, but there's also the same question about time. I haven't talked about the age of the universe. There are also two ways to think about that. The universe could be endless in time, endless before us and endless after us, or it may have a beginning and an end, and both possibilities were considered. So the, uh, for example, the Christian tradition, because it has a genesis, a beginning of the religion, of the time in the religion, the scientists who are familiar with that were happy to think that the universe had a beginning too. But in a tradition like yours, 
I think the idea of endless time is, is more acceptable. It's a different, it's a different tradition. Tamayori so let's just take a little time and discuss in groups how you understand the distinction between the universe with an edge or no edge, a boundary in time or no boundary in time. And and maybe afterwards you can some of you can tell me what is the what comes from your tradition about those. Things, space and time. <laughs> Tutti so, um, <laughs> in terms of the uh, time limit, um, there's no beginning uh, and uh, uh, no end. Um, and also, um, in terms of the space, we cannot have a, a boundary of something uh, uh, because uh, uh, we can talk about the boundary of a galaxy, but if you go beyond that galaxy, then uh, you can have another galaxy, and so mm -hmm. that's, um, you can go many light years mm -hmm. uh, and still you can find uh, uh, galaxies beyond uh, that uh, area, okay. that limit. Well, let me add, wait, so I'll, I'll is, take more, but uh, I want to... That's all mentioned in, according to the Buddhist traditions, and to, uh, to some extent, it also resonates with the uh, idea uh, right. of the cosmology in the science. So I have a question for you. In, th in this cosmology or a tradition where, there, where time is infinite, endless, going back, there's no beginning, how do we understand ourselves, our place in the universe? If, are we, if, because... If time is infinite and there's no beginning, we have no place in it, right? There's no progression. There's no sense we are here and we are going there. We're just in the middle of inf infinite. How do we understand our place in the history of the universe, in your tradition? <laughs> Uh, okay. Um, okay, so... Uh, <laughs> 
So uh, others, they are saying that this is not the answer. But uh, uh, what he said is that um, even though there's no beginning and uh, no end for the whole kind of uh, uh, universe system, but for individual particulars uh, within the system, uh, it can have a beginning and the end. And so that's the okay. Okay. So, so other, this, yeah. This Tio <laughs> In an intermediary at this Yahoyola. In that tactic to the Dunchas and Gamares, and then that's how much to set to Joko Bari Yakoyota. So, normally in Buddhist system, we, we, when we talk about some philosophical dispositions, uh, uh, we um, uh, say this in terms of uh, in relation to other things. So when you talk about this is the beginning and, and this is the end, or this is the endless, or this is beginningless, uh, it also depends on uh, some, some individual's uh, point of view. So um, in that, when you talk about this, um, uh, things in relation to others, like in relation to human thoughts, then you can also have a, a, a beginning and the end. Uh, when, when, and there's always a limit in our thinking. And when we think about something that has the limit or uh, something that has no limit, then according to our um, uh, mental dispositions, um, uh, the, um, saying that there is a uh, kind of a, uh, a limit is a little bit um, uncomfortable. And uh, um, um, it's better to say that there's a, uh, a, no beginning and no end. Uh, oh, so it's interesting possibility that the the need, the perceived need to have a limit is if because of our, the limit of our brain. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah okay. Mm. Not, it's not a limit of the universe, it's yes. a limit of our yes. brain. Yes. Okay, that's, I understand. Any other so in terms of what is the real uh, situation is that um, uh, the real nature of the phenomena will not depend on uh, somebody else uh, thought or thinking. So that means um, uh, if you are a, a, a person, uh, and then um, um, there's no time uh, you can say that, oh, this, at that, that time he is not a human person, and after this time he became a, a, a kind of a, a person. Uh, if it, he is a person, then he is, pers he is a person before, and he is a person later. Same way if it is beginningless at the uh, real kind of um, nature, then it does not change its nature just by uh, uh, thinking of other people. Okay, so let me ask this question in a slightly different way. I will take other, but let me ask this, this goes, question again. Um, what does, does the philosoph philosophy you have of where the, it, it could be endless time, infinite time, does that remove the idea of progress? Tilo <laughs> Yargesi 
when you talk about the universe in a general, then you cannot talk about progress. Right. But in relation to one individual or in relation to one specific civilization, then you can talk about uh, yeah. um, uh, the progress of that individual or that civilization within a certain uh, mm -hmm. time frame. So for example, uh, when we talk about history of science, you can, uh, based on one individual's finding and compare that to another individual's finding, then you can talk about um, the progress of mm -hmm. the scientific uh, uh, findings from the uh, past one to the next. Otherwise, in terms of the general universe, you cannot talk about uh, progress. Okay, okay. so uh, uh, in one of the science classes uh, our teacher told us that the, um, energy cannot be created and it cannot be destroyed, but it can uh, transform from one form to the other. Mm -hmm. uh, the same way, when we talk about the life in the universe, um, um, it can go from one life form to the other, but you cannot create a life from a lifeless object. And, uh, at the, uh, and uh, a lifeless cannot become a life uh, um, thing. Okay. The same, uh, and, uh, the, and that means it, will, it is always there uh, from the uh, beginning to the end. Except but there no is end. no beginning, and, no but no <laughs> end and no beginning. So life is eternal? This is an interesting question. Is, is life eternal in the eternal Buddhist universe? Not, indivi not individual life, but life. General. Okay. So that means um, um, when we talk about the entire uh, universe system, then uh, there's no beginning and no end to the life. But you can talk about the beginning of the life on this planet and the end of the life on this, mm -hmm. this planet. Mm -hmm. And there can have a time when, when, where, when we don't have life on this planet. So let me be clear. So I understand now on the time issue, but what about on space? There's nothing in your tradition that makes, assigns a limit to space? Okay. 
Sanjay Sunas So let me talk about you. Uh, you said uh, progress, and so related to that question, uh, and uh, in um, our tradition, um, it is said that. Uh, um, for uh, persons um, uh, uh, mental continuum, there's no beginning, but there's an end. So when you say the end, if you become a Buddha, then you're no longer an uh, uh, um, ordinary, ordinary uh, sentient being. So right. you are a Buddha. So that means there's an end to uh, being an ordinary uh, sentient being. Right. So, but the Buddha is there, and the, 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 the continuum can, is from the... Uh, okay, so, so now you talk about sentient beings. <laughs> let, let, me a, let me ask about that. In a big universe, just uh, yesterday in the news was a very interesting story about the number of habitable Earth-like planets in the Milky Way galaxy. So from, sci from science now, the number, it's an amazing number. The number from the Kepler satellite is 10 billion, about 10 billion, maybe 20 billion, habitable Earth-like worlds in the Milky Way galaxy. Habitable means the planet is like the Earth, rocky, small, and has the temperature where water can exist and so life could exist. This is the number, and because the Milky Way is just one galaxy, the number of habitable worlds in the universe is... This is the number of places where life could exist, according to astronomers. So my question for you, anyone, is how special are we? How unique are we? How much sentient life do you think may be in all these places? Or none?
So he says that yes, um, in Buddhist tradition, uh, um, uh, we talk about um, several billion uh, universe where we have where uh, we can have uh, sentient beings, mm -hmm. and so um, uh, it could be uh, uh, and s not just and sentient, but. We're not special, yeah. similar to and us. And, but he didn't um, talk anything about whether we are special or not. Okay. So I asked again know. him, and so he said that uh, um, uh, when we talk about the sentient life on this planet Earth, uh, normally we say that the humans are special because we, because of our uh, mental intelligence, uh, we can do uh, many good things that other sentient beings could not. Uh, but uh, uh, we cannot say that we are unique uh, when we are compared to the other sentient beings all over the universe because we don't know what other types of sentient beings are there. They could be superior to us uh, and they could be um, less intelligent than us. So uh, uh, when we compare us to the other sentient beings in the other universe, then we cannot have a uh, uh, statement. Mm -hmm. okay. Maybe but it's but it's possible. Maybe I mean. some some of the lives who live in the different galaxies and different earth mm -hmm. have a special quality that is necessary for where they live okay. and who they are. Okay. And also even we have a special qualities here but doesn't necessarily special for them. But these things are nobody can predict. Okay. Mm -hmm. But sentience is uni universal. It could be universal. Space is endless. Yeah. And and life is endless. Right. Okay. That's mm. for sure. Okay. There's <laughs> 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 okay, someone else. Yeah, do it. Yeah, do it. So this is the amount of um Zambuling is a jigden kamre. This is the um, number of the uh, planets uh, mentioned in the uh, Buddhist traditions. Ten to the minus nine or nine? Nine, nine, sorry. Oh, billion, okay. All right. So it's very, these are, they're similar number, quite similar. In one galaxy. This one, this one, five millions. Oh. Oh. So, um, um, and we talk about the multi, multi universe. And this is the number of planets that can be uh, uh, um, habited by life in one uh, universe. Oh, okay. uh, they can be have uh, many okay. other uh, right. of this. A large number. Okay, I want to wrap up before, uh, yes, before the break by saying why changing the ideas can be difficult. Maybe not for you and your tradition, but in the Western tradition, uh, to change from this, the earth at the center not moving, we are special, we are unique, to this from Copernicus was very difficult. Tanda <laughs> 
kola uni ki ani jigden kham dine ani nima uni ki jigden kham de lapa ani samlo gwa ta ya la ani kangi chimbo jore kangi chimbo yo jumze yores and the difficulty is of course not for a scientific or logical reason the difficulty in the west in europe at this time 500 years ago is because you're challenging the religion and you're challenging the culture and you're challenging this idea that we are the center of creation karjis loving bina ani nobjo ki nanglo la dinde ki ani samlo la ani gwa tham tang thobya la kangi the goya ko jumjin di karis labe bina di sire ki thone kangi thi goya mare thiga na shi tadru ki thone kangi yo ji mare kangi thi goya jumjin karis labe bina dinde ki gwa tang wa di ki ani khawal la dong thu yung yo ris labe bina rikshun la dong thu yung yo re thiga na shi chulu la dong thu yung yo re thiga na shi chulu da rikshun ki jamjun jenki ani mi ger chira pa dinju ki ani so 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 thimu mai ba inga ko jo ko sha wa yin se dinde ki sam tang na de la ani dong thu yung yo chira di jin kangi res but there there is a consequence, another consequence of this change, which leads to this, is that when the Earth is, the Earth is now one of the objects in space, and the Earth is not fundamentally different from Mars, Jupiter, Saturn. It's just a world in space. Not, it's not special, unique, privileged. It's a world in space. And now, of course, we know how many worlds in space there are. Se kola se di ani tumu mai bi ke che ju jin ke ani ne chi mai ba ni ya ani ring an zu ke ni me ke chim ju ke nang lo ge we sa pu da pa san pen ba den zu da ani ring da we pa na na ding ding ye ke ani sa ji re se ke sam lo de lo ge wa te yu du san ba la sam lo de ge wa te wa te ni ani yar gen ro ya de ani ge bo shi wo shi chin ji an ta ma ko le re sla bi me na tan da an zu ji den kam ta ni me chi ka de tan da gu ze ke mo ji bu ke nang lo la sa ding am sta yo re se ke ta sam lo ge ji sa de ne ji ke ro tu bi yo re also when this change, when you remove the stars from being in one place, one distance, and you make the stars distributed in space, then you can easily imagine that a star is like the sun, but just much further away and so much fainter. So the man who really made the Copernicus idea uh, real, he provided important evidence with the telescope, was of course Galileo. He was a great scientist, probably the first great physical scientist in history, but he got into a serious argument with the Catholic Church. He, he was forced to admit that the earth did not move. He was forced to lie. He was placed under house arrest and he spent the last 15 years of his life not able to leave his house. His book was banned uh, for almost 200 years, it was to only taken off the banned book list in 1824. And, and the Catholic Church works very slowly. So finally, in 1992, uh, he was vindicated or pardoned by John Paul II, the Pope. And all of this for just all of this was just for supporting the Copernican idea. 
Galileo didn't hurt anyone, he didn't make any wars, he didn't make any bad inventions, he just believed in one idea. One, one uh, person in this time was not so fortunate. This is a monk. His name is Giordano Bruno. He was very radical and very bold. He not only supported the Copernicus idea, but he argued that the planets were worlds like the Earth. He argued that they would be habitable. He argued that they would have animals and creatures like us on them. And so he, he are talked about and wrote about life in the universe. <laughs> So he was 400 years ahead of his time because only now do we know that habitable worlds are everywhere. But be careful. This is a warning to you. You are all monks. Let me tell you what happened to this monk in the year, <laughs> in the year 1600. <laughs> this is the Campo de Fiore in Rome, in the middle of Rome, and this was the statue made for Bruno. This is what they did to Bruno in 1600. I, I will use karma to they put him, they took his clothes off, he was naked, and they covered him in animal, you know, the animal dung and straw, and he made, they made him sit in a cart. So he was sitting in a cart naked and covered with straw and animal poop. And and, and then they, they move him around the square many times so that people could laugh at him. And it was a big holiday. It was a celebration. Families there, children were there. Then... <laughs> Then they stand him behind, on top of a big pile of wood, and he is tied to a stake, hands behind his back. He is asked, but the soldiers are there, he is asked if he wants to repent, if he wants to say he doesn't believe these things one more time, and he says no, he says I, I still believe them. I will not do it, but what they do is they take a, a spike and they drive it through his tongue into his jaw so he cannot say these bad things while he dies. And the only mercy given to him, one of the soldiers gives him a bag of gunpowder to hold. 
That is a mercy because he will die quicker when they light the fire. And yeah. So be careful, cosmology is dangerous. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm not making a joke because this is terrible. It's always terrible when in science you have ideas and they lead to bad, bad things, when people cannot accept ideas. So let me just finish with some general comment about uh, how science works. And in, the, and in the method of science, of course, we have observations, we have data, we have things we can measure, and then we have ideas, theories, things that we can keep in our head. And the relationship between the ideas and the observations is, is interesting. So let's just imagine in the uni in the, what happens in the universe, we can divide it into two. There are the things that do happen, the things that are, and the things that don't happen that are not. And let us imagine that, our, that science is still young, that science is still developing. And let us also be a little humble, have a little humility, and let's just imagine that our ideas, our theories, they can't explain everything that happens, everything that is, they can explain some fraction. And our goal, if we are finishing science, our goal is to have a theory of everything. You may hear this phrase, physics talks about this, theory of everything. And that means we have a theory that explains everything that is, everything that happens. And if it's a good theory of everything, of course it only just fits here. It doesn't, it doesn't explain things that don't happen, then it would be a bad theory. But here's the problem. It's not just that our ideas are beginning and limited. Our observations are limited, so we don't know everything that happens in the universe. We haven't seen it yet. So the problem is, 
when we reach for a theory of everything, we may end up with a theory of too much. Now, I think this is a problem for science, but I don't think it's a problem for us as people, and here's why. So again, here is everything that is, everything that happens, and all this is things that don't happen, things that don't exist. In science, there are things that are possible, but don't actually happen. If you work out, if you use real physics to calculate, because of quantum uncertainty, the energy levels change, there is a tiny probability that an object like this or like this will spontaneously jump a little on its own. So we can calculate this. Um, one atom can jump energy all the time. This is a lot of atoms, so the, the probability of it jumping in energy all the same way is very low. And you can work out that the, the ball can do this, but you could wait the history of the universe and it won't happen. You would have to wait, you know, uh, billions and trillions of years. Or, or even simpler example, imagine I have a bag of 1,000 coins and I throw them up in the air. There is, it is possible that all 1,000 will land heads the same way. It's possible. But you will be throwing the bag of coins longer than your life, maybe longer than the age of the earth before it will happen. So, so really, in, in conceptually, we can say there are three things, there are three types of things. There are things that do happen, and we see them, and we can measure them and talk about them. There are things that could happen, they're possible, they don't break the law of physics, but they're so rare, nobody can see them, and, we don't, and they don't happen, or there are things that just cannot happen. <laughs> So in science, we try to distinguish between this and this and this, but the interesting thing is our brain, which is the imagination. And what we can imagine, we show in this area. 
Cerik nanglola ni jadi semua ni jadi cah di yerwa. Tapi cerik nanglola ani tapsi cah di yang yang di karen tunggu yerwa di lah tak cah di di ni ani yang siwa kangsi la ani yang metum ni ani cawan ni mewah ribas sumsi yerwa. Ini benda nanti ki ani semua nang kor di topi nang syar di kau di tu syar di di karen selam ini benda ngombo di kanzang jelah tu sampai la ni jadi ribas sum di kanzang la cah di yeres. So our mind is a wonderful thing because we can imagine. Most of the things that happen in the universe, maybe there are things that happen we can't really imagine. We can also imagine the possible things. I, I made you imagine that this ball could jump up because it could happen. And we can also imagine impossible things. People write books and fiction and science fiction about this. <laughs> เห็นไหมนะเช้าชิ้นจุดจิตโลเลดัวเช้าดิลเลดจะมันงูจิตเด้งคำกุนังโลเลยยุงกุยเยาวันนี่ทุกุยเยาวีเหมือนนะงั้